We're back with my good friend, Robert Zarco. He's one of the top franchise attorneys in the world, and he's my personal friend and my personal attorney. Welcome to the show, Robert Zarco. Well, good morning, Jim. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a privilege. You and I have been talking about doing this for a long time, and uh, I'm looking forward to having this exchange with you today. I love you, Robert. So let's get started with, tell me the Robert Zarco story, because it's one of the reasons that I fell in love with you and have you as my attorney, because I really believe in you because of all the things you've accomplished in life. You know, it's a long story, but I'm going to make it very brief. It's a little bit of a rags to riches story. Family came from uh, Cuba back in 1961. Immigrants with uh, no money at all. Uh, family, my father and my mom had uh, licenses in Cuba, you know, professional licenses, CPA, pharmaceutical, came to this country with nothing. Had to go work at a factory making 60 cents an hour, 18 hours a day, seven days a week for about uh, almost 16 years. It was a very, very uh, aggressive lifestyle, very challenging. And when I saw that kind of work ethic, it's something that's naturally gravitated towards me. Um, and uh, through the process, I guess, uh, of, of just watching and learning and being impacted by it, I decided that I needed to help my parents out uh, for me to be able to have the nicer things in life, which is something that uh, for some reason I was born with that desire. So I started a landscape business at the age of seven years old, uh, which was very interesting because it was a very successful business, like extraordinarily by the time I was 15 years old, I believe I had saved about fifty-two, fifty-four thousand dollars $54,000. Which you can imagine, that's like uh, almost uh, 45 years ago. So in today's dollars, who knows what that a really lot. would be. But a lot. And uh, onward, I was a good student, did very well. Went on to, uh, uh, when I graduated from high school, Miami Senior High School. Oldest Stingery. high school. Stingery. Stingery, oldest Ooh. high school in the Southeast United States. And then uh, I, went, I went to Harvard, got a degree in economics from, from Harvard. Went ahead and, uh, and when I graduated uh, from Harvard, I was drafted by some of the larger companies. Ended up working for General Motors in their management and executive training program for uh, 18 months. Got a tremendous number of promotions during that time. Stayed on for another two years as a financial analyst. Realized that the corporate America world is full of red tape and bureaucracy. I said, I'm done. I want to do something that is more... Uh, readily designed for someone who wants to be personally responsible for his uh, successes, his victories, and, and his losses. And I decided to go to law school. I went to law school, graduated. Uh, during the time that I was attending law school, I worked at various uh, highfalutin, you know, very, very nice uh, law firms in town, met a lot of wonderful people, learned a lot. And when I graduated, I went to work at a law firm called Floyd Pearson, Richmond Greer, Wallace, Zach, and Brumbaugh. Remember them? The big uh, preeminent trial sure. law firm in this town. We still have a lot of the wonderful uh, lawyers in town and judges in the town that came are, and are alumni of that firm. And then I went to another law firm, was there for a couple of years. It was not for me and decided to go up on my, uh, go out on my own and put my own shingle out when I was about 30, 31 years old. And that was 30 years ago on February 26th. The law firm will be celebrating 30th anniversary. Better invite me and Vivian to the big party. The only person I'm going to miss really bad is Don Shula. First of all, thank you for introducing me and my wife to Don Shula. We'll talk about that a little later. Yeah, that was a very close friend. It's, I'm proud to say that his 90th birthday party was a surprise party that I threw for him uh, at my home and at him and his family. And of course, to his surprise, and he had no idea i had the entire 1972 perfect season football team so uh, at the house and that was a really nice event and it was a la his last hurrahs because he you know he passed uh, shortly thereafter listen i i do want to say one thing we do have something in common that i never do before i mowed lawns as a kid too but i wasn't as uh, focused and uh, maniacal as you were uh watch but i did wash pots and pans and clean toilets it's, i love you man it's so great to be with somebody else who's self-made. I, I did clean toilets at Harvard. Okay, that was the highest paying job on campus, certainly the dirtiest one. But uh, for being the poorest kid from Miami among a, a, a sea of very wealthy people, I always seem to have had more cash than anyone else. And I always found that to be interesting. That is tremendous. Now, I want to talk a little bit about your professional career. You mentioned that you worked at one of the top trial, trial firms in town, a lot of them people and alumni went on to be judges as the as the note on your desk says a good lawyer uh, you know understands the law a great lawyer knows the judges so high five to you on that tell me a little bit about being a trial lawyer before we get into a focus on uh, franchise and some of the other things that you've done 
I love being a commercial trial lawyer. I believe in the adversarial system of justice. I think that uh, when you have both sides, you know, representing uh, the respective parties, um, I, I think that it allows the best evidence to be able to present it by either side. And I believe I have a, a natural talent for being a, a, an orator uh, and, a, and a public speaker. I do a lot of public speaking now, but I think a lot of that has been uh, purified or polished, if you may, as a result of my experience as a trial lawyer. I've, I've tried many, many, many cases, I would say 150, 200 cases over my career, not to mention the number of arbitrations I've been involved in. Um, and the judges know me not because uh, of anything other than because they see my work. Preparation, focus. There is no substitute for preparation, Jim, no, nothing at all. And most importantly, let me tell you something. What makes us different in, in my law firm, you know, the, we have 15 lawyers here, uh, and I'm very proud of each High five to Jackie Beta. Yes, sir. He's one of our new additions. I actually, love him. He's a superstar. Yes, he is. He's a, a young lawyer with a lot of energy, a fantastic work ethic, and someone that I think is going to have a glorious uh, and prosperous future. Uh, but I think the most important thing is that uh, I have a tremendous passion for being a lawyer. I actually love what I do. I could have retired 15, 20 years ago because we've had a very, a very wonderful, glorious success. However, I just recently signed a 20-year lease and invested a ridiculous amount of money in my office here, which is in 26,000 square feet. So you can imagine, okay, the commitment. And that's because I have a commitment to my, to my career. Uh, I have a commitment to the law. More importantly, I have a commitment to my clients. And your partners, okay? too. And my partners, oh, my God, my partners. They're like my brothers and sisters. My, the, my number two guy has been with me here 28 Shout years. Out. Uh, Bob Einhorn, 28 years. Salkowski, 27 years. Alex Brito, 25 years. My CFO, 26 years. My other, uh, Himanshu Patel, 21 years. Uh, Kari Gagnon, 20 years. I mean, it's been a tremendous run for everyone. And it's one of the very few law firms in town where uh, the partnership is more like a brotherhood than anything else. It seems to me like people come here to be part of a family and to get that family experience. And, you know, even if somebody just goes to the website, they can see some of the beautiful comments that your clients have made to talk about preparation, kindness, and truly it seems to radiate the love that they have for you. Um, what is it that, about a client that you find to be the most important thing? Well, first of all, the client comes first. Mm -hmm. Client makes final decisions. However, however, there are times in which you have clients that don't necessarily understand the process. They may be frustrated with delays that are beyond the control of the lawyer, whether it be the, de the delays in the, court, in the courthouse, the delays in the system, the procedural rules that you have to go through, or something uh, as crazy as what we experienced with COVID, mm. that the courthouse shuts down, the system mm. shuts down, the adversarial system shuts down. And, and now where people like to go in, before the court, they like to have their day in court. Now it's, well, we're going to have our day in Zoom. Oh. Well, that is very impersonal. You don't get the same feel. You don't, say, you don't get the same energy. You don't have the same interaction with the court. And you don't have the same interaction with the opposing lawyers. You know, Robert, I'd like to really talk a little bit about franchise law, why you like that, and some of the finer points that you can bring to the table as a top franchise lawyer. Uh, let's do that right after we sell a couple of cars for my good friends at Warren Henry. Absolutely. All right, great.